Framer CMS is the tool we use to add dynamic content to our website. And today I want to talk about one of the latest updates, CMS references. What's up guys, it's G here. Uh, Framer CMS has been getting some nice updates in the past few months. Today, I want to talk to you about CMS references. They initially launched this about three months ago. So if you don't know how to use that yet, stick with me until the end of this video because this is gonna save you a lot of time. So I have an example blog here with a couple of articles. And the thing here is you're gonna have a couple of fields that are gonna repeat themselves in more than one article. For example, the author. The same author is probably gonna write more than one article. And you don't wanna have to enter the same details for every post. For example, write the author's name, the role, and pick a profile picture for every single one of them. This is a lot of unnecessary manual work and it's also prone to errors. So that's where the CMS references is gonna come in handy. Now, what we can do is add a new collection for the authors. Let's call this authors. And first let's edit the fields. So I'm gonna remove the content and change the title to just name and then and another field for the role and also add an image field for the profile picture. I can then add that same author here just once. So let's call it Jundo, founder and CEO. And let me pick a profile picture. Perfect, now that's done. Let me just save this. I can go back to my initial collection and let's edit the fields. Click on the plus sign, I'm gonna search for the reference. And in here, I'm gonna select the other collection that I have just created. And just like that, it's gonna create a new field down here for me in which I can simply pick the author from the other collection. So this is a thousand times easier, faster, and you're also gonna ensure consistency throughout all of your blog posts. Once that is done, let's go back to our page. Now we have to properly link these fields to our collection so they can show the correct data. Let's start with the image. I'm gonna go to fill, click on the plus sign, set variable, search for the reference collection, and I'm gonna select profile picture. Next up is the name. I'm actually gonna change the placeholder so you can see the changes in real time here. Same thing here. Let's go to content, set variable, author, and select name. Perfect. Last one is the role, author, and select role. How easy is that? And now, of course, there are a couple of things that we have to do. Let me just select. Well, actually, first of all, I'm gonna add a couple more authors to our example. Great, so I added two more authors here, and naturally, if I go and another post and select, for example, Jane Smith. So this was how to choose the right colors. Once I go to that post, everything is updated. And this is great because if let's say, for example, down the road, Jane Smith receives a promotion and now she's the vice president. It's going to reflect that change in every single post that she wrote. And that's basically it. There is one final step, which is defining a condition for the visibility of this entire stack in case you didn't select the author for a specific article. So if I go back to the articles collection, uh, let's edit the fields. We can actually delete all of these other fields here. but. If you have set this field to be required, you're not going to have to worry about this final step. But let's say you left this on optional. What you can do is select the entire stack, which contains all of these three elements. Let's go next to the visibility. Click on the plus sign, set variable. Search for the author is set. So basically what I'm telling Framer here is if I don't have anything set in this specific field, inside my CMS collection, don't show this stack. So for example, if I choose another article that doesn't have this set up, that stack is gone. So this is how you would use the new CMS references feature. Very, very easy to implement. Definitely worth checking it out, all right? One final thing that I wanted to mention, they just released this like two or three days ago. 
is the new sorting feature. I have another example here with a collection list. And let's say you want to offer your users the possibility of sorting these items. Now we can do just that. The first step is turning this into a component. Let's call it log. And this can be our recent variant. And from here is very straightforward. I'm just going to duplicate this whole thing. This is going to be alphabetical. And here I'm just going to change the variance of these buttons. So the first one's going to be deactivated and the second one's going to be activated here. Perfect. So this is just a simple component, just so I have the two variants to work with. Now what I can do is select my collection list and we have this new sorting feature. So let's click on that. I'm going to select the field, which is the title, and it already selected from A to Z. The final step is setting the interactions between these two variants. Let's start with this button. And remember that everything that I do in my primary variant is going to be carried over to the other ones. So what I can do here is select the button, press L on my keyboard and connect this to itself, right? So this is going to make sure that every single click on this button takes me to this variant, which is exactly what I want. Now for the second one, I'm going to select the other button, press L again and connect to this other variant. Let's see how it looks. Now, if I click on the other button, the items are going to organize themselves automatically. And also how cool is this animation? Framer did a fantastic job here again, and we didn't have to set up anything manually. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.